Welcome back. In this part, I'm going to show you how to actually build the tree once you've completed the cost table and the root table. Remember the interpretation here is that R sub ij is the root of the optimal binary search tree for keys ki through kj. In our last computation in the previous example, 3, or C, was the value of L that gave us the minimum value. Along the diagonal, we only have single node trees. Keys 1 through 1, of course it's going to be 1. 2 through 2, it's going to be 2, etc. Each one of these values corresponded to the L that gave us the minimum cost. We now need to construct this tree given this root table. So the first question I'm going to ask is, what is our root of all of the keys, 1 through 5? It's going to be 3. That means that I need to construct a tree with 3 as the root, and keys 1 through 2 will be in the left subtree, and keys 4 through 5 will be in the right subtree. Now I can recursively ask the same question, but for keys 1 through 2. Here it says that 1 should be the root of this subtree. When we do that, there are no more keys left for the left subtree. And 2 will be its own root. For the right subtree, we look up the table for 4 to 5, then it says that 5 should be our root. There is no right subtree, and 4 ends up being its own root. And that will be the optimal binary search tree for this particular input. Now let's go ahead and verify that answer from before. If you recall, it had a value of 1.573. That's the average number of key comparisons for this constructed tree. Let's verify it. For C, being at the root, there's only one comparison. For A, there would be two comparisons. For B, there would be three comparisons. D would be three comparisons. And E, represented here by five, will have two comparisons. and our solution matches. Of course, it's easy if you're directly looking at this table, but if you were to actually program this, you're going to have to come up with a solution that's either recursive or that builds the tree iteratively using a smart data structure, like a stack, to simulate the recursion. That's the solution I'm going to show you. So given the keys and the root table, we'll output the root of the optimal binary search tree, having built all of its children. We'll build a new root node with the key value corresponding to the root table's 1n entry. We'll create a new stack because we're going to push nodes onto that stack for later processing, just like a pre-order traversal. I'm actually going to push a tuple, a triple here. The node, as well as the key value ranges, i and j, that it corresponds to. In general, it'll be a tree node, and i and j indices. Now I go into my traditional while loop,
and I'll process the node on the top of the stack, creating its children if they exist. Now this node has already been built with its key value. I'll look up the key value of the tree consisting of keys ki through kj, which has already been assigned to you, but I'm looking it up again for convenience. Now we have some decisions to make. k sub l is our root. And in the left subtree, we have key values i through l minus 1. And in the right subtree, we have values k sub l plus 1 through k sub j. When do we know we have a left subtree to process? And when do we know we have a right subtree to process? If the root value here is the first key, then that means that everything is over here and we don't have a left child, and we don't have a left subtree. On the other end of the extreme, if k sub l is equal to k sub j, then there's no right tree. We'll use both of these criteria to determine whether or not we should continue building the left subtree and or continue building the right subtree. So that this looks more like a post-order traversal, I'll go ahead and push whether or not we need to take care of the right subtree and then the left subtree so, so that when the next thing is popped off the stack, we'll take care of building the right subtree first. The order generally doesn't matter, but when you simulate this algorithm, it'll, it'll look most like a pre-order traversal. We want to build the right subtree when this is not the case. When L is strictly less than J, that means that we have nodes over here. We'll create a new node with the key that corresponds to this subtree. This new node will be the right child of our current node. And then we need to make sure that we push this combination onto our stack so that we can then go ahead and take care of the rest of the tree as we go along. That builds the right subtree if it needs to be built. Now I'll use the other condition to determine whether or not we need to build the left subtree. We'll create a new node with the key r sub i l minus 1, and we'll make it use left child. Then we push it on the stack for later processing. And this is how we can use a stack along with the root table to actually build the optimal binary search tree.